here for your Wednesday afternoon yin yang session, yin yang yoga session, clearly. Today we're going to do actually a yin yang yin class, um, usual about between 35 to 40 minutes. We're going to start with some long held, uh, slow yin poses to prepare us for the more active, dynamic. Um, flow and then we'll just finish with a bit more um, yin just to bring us down and um, so you can move on to the next part of your day all balanced and lovely so that's the idea so let's get straight into it we're just going to start on the floor so props that you might need I think you can see yep are some cushions a blanket and some blocks or books, but as always, if you don't have them, um, that's fine, it's not a problem. So we're gonna start in a position, a pose called recline butterfly. So if you just move down onto the floor, sit with your feet on the floor here, bring the soles of the feet together, and let the knees flop out to the sides. And then we're actually going to do this recline. So we're going to do this lying, <clears throat> lying down. So you can bring your feet a bit closer if you prefer, or you can move them further away. Just play with that and you may well find that the stretch, the stimulation um, might change to different parts of the leg. So in general, the closer they are to you, you feel it more on the inside thighs. The further away, it starts moving more towards the outside in general. Not necessarily the case with everybody. So this is a bit more restorative actually. We're not looking for a massive stretch here. We're just kind of warming up the body a bit. So put the feet and the legs wherever is comfortable, actually, is more important, I would say. If you're finding any uncomfortable sensations in the knees and moving the feet away in more of a diamond pose doesn't help, then another option is to put something underneath the knees. And then you can just open the arms out to the sides to open the chest. Close your eyes and we're going to stay in here for just over a couple of minutes just to bring ourselves onto the mat away from whatever you were doing. So I just want you to notice the connection between yourself and the floor. So notice where that connection is, which parts of the body are touching the floor or the mat, which parts are grounded. Sensing your breath. And seeing if you can notice the movement that the body makes as you breathe in and you breathe out. And where that movement is most prominent for you. Just going to stay here for another minute or so, keeping it easy, keeping it relaxed, just grounding ourselves and bringing ourselves into our bodies.
And for the last half a minute or so, if you felt like you'd like a little bit more stretch on the front of the torso, you might want to move the arms up. They can be straight or they can be bent. You can even move them slightly to one side, particularly if you're feeling any pinching sensations in the shoulders. Doesn't really matter how they are, but just moving them above the head on the floor behind you, you may well feel more of a stretch on the front of the torso, the chest, the rectus abdominis, the abs, the front of the body. So then we're going to move out of this position. So just bring the arms down and just gently bring the knees in together and just roll over to one side. Just stay there for a moment. Noticing how the legs feel, maybe the back, maybe another part of the body. And then depending on which side you're lying on, then just push yourself up using the right or the left hand, gently coming up to the centre. And then the next yin pose that we're going to do is just to stimulate the wrists, the inside wrists, because with the flow, um, quite a lot of that is going to be on the hands. So this is helpful to do before putting uh, quite a lot of weight on the hands. So just come on to hands and knees first, tuck the toes under or not, doesn't matter, and turn the hands so they're facing the opposite way. And then just play with the weight. So what we want here, as with all yin poses, is coming to your natural stopping point, not pushing any further than that, and then and then stopping. So that may be, I've actually got quite a lot of um, extension in my wrists, perhaps you can see that, but you may be, for example, your hands may be closer, you may be just, you may be not just, but you may be here, you may be here, you may be even further back than me, it's different depending on your skeleton. So your hands can be anywhere, close to you, further away, Play with the weight, moving it backwards and forwards till you find that natural stopping point. Don't go any further, stay there. If you find that that stretch is actually too much or maybe it's too much compression in the fronts of the wrists, you can always move your hands. They don't need to be directly pointing towards you. You can move them more to the sides, even completely to the sides, if you feel that's giving you enough stretch in the wrists. And then when you found the pose, then just stay. We'll be in this for slightly over two minutes. No, actually about just under two minutes, because some of you have been in this for about half a minute already. with any of these upper body poses that I teach you for yin yoga, like this one, the majority of the classic yin yoga poses are the lower body, so particularly the hips and the legs. And there are many reasons for that. One, for example, being that as we're working in a physical sense on the connective tissue of the body, I'm sure you've heard that a million times from me before, then there is a, a hell of a lot of connective tissue, particularly in the lower body, and that is the, um, the parts of us, that's the area within our bodies that tend to get uh, stiff and stiffer as we age. So that's one reason that we work on the lower body a lot in yin yoga. But actually there are quite a few upper body poses as well, like this one, 
but whilst the lower body ones we tend to stay in for around three to five minutes more actually if you wanted to but a minimum of three in general these upper body ones they can be they can be more like a couple of minutes and you'd still get the, the benefits of the pose you will find in general in any yin yoga class that you tend to see a lot more of the lower body, the more traditional yin poses, I suppose. The upper body ones came later and not all teachers use them or use them as much. Okay, so then I think we're going to come out of this. So then just bring the weight forward and then just take the hands up don't move them yet so you can either sit back on the knees or you can move into child's pose as you want but just keeping the hands rested and relaxed first before we make any movements if you look at the hands you might notice they're a bit red maybe a bit blotchy that's completely normal that means that the, uh, the circulation is being stimulated, the blood is flowing. Also in an energetic sense, if you're interested in that, the chi, the prana, the energy is flowing as well in those areas. Many of the meridians of traditional Chinese medicine, the major meridians end in the hands, in the fingers, or start. So when you start to feel any sensations pass, then just make very small movements with the fingers, getting bigger and bigger. Could well be feeling fragile, probably is, probably are. And then start making fists, separating, widening the fingers as they get bigger bigger fists and then you might want to circle the wrists one way and then circle them the other way. And now we're going to move into the yin part, sorry the yang part, we're going to move into the flows, short flows, this, this is just a short, short session. So as I said a lot of this is going to be you know, bit of bit of bit of weight on the hands, so that's why we <clears throat> that's why we uh, just stretch the wrists to help them prepare for that. So we're going to start with cat cow. So just go onto your hands and knees, making sure that your shoulders feel comfortable, and if you feel that actually moving the fingers slightly out to the sides makes your shoulders more comfortable, then do that. Same with the knees, put them at the position where your hips feel comfortable as well. And then start bringing in the Ujjayi breath, if you know the Ujjayi breath, so the ocean breathing. Nothing too heavy, and we'll try to do the movements with the breath. Fairly slow Ujjayi breath. Okay, and on the first in-breath, just arch the spine. As you breathe out, curve the spine, push into the hands, push into the knees. Breathe in, bring the shoulder blades together, head up, arch. Breathe out, curve the spine, push into the hands, push into the feet and the knees, really curve. Breathe in, arch. Breathe out, curve. You can move a bit at the end if you want to. Breathe in, arch, shoulder blades together. Head up. Breathe out and curve. Just move a bit, naturally, organically. Arch. Curve. Just move how your body wants to move. Move the hips, arch. 
Maybe move the shoulders a bit. Curve. Two more, arch. Moving the spine and curve. Now on the next one, as you breathe in, I want you to rotate the spine. So we're gonna use a different movement. So breathe in and just curve the spine to the right and to the left. So we're rounding the spine and curving and arching the spine, but this time we're going around. So it's like you're going to the right, you're bringing the body down, and then you're, uh, you're um, rotating to the left. So you're doing big circles in the air. Elbows can bend. I don't care if the hands move actually, it doesn't matter. What we're looking for here is this movement in the spine. Shoulders can move, fine. Doesn't really matter if the hips go kind of a bit back or a bit forwards as well, also fine. What we want to do here is we want to have that movement, that rotation in the spine. And then let's go the other way. So then big circles to the right coming up and to the left. Doing it with the breath. Keeping the breath slow and even like you were doing before. And as I said, to the left and to the right, but then also if the shoulders move a bit backwards, a bit forwards, if the hips start doing the same, Fine, doesn't matter. Be organic. Just allow the spine to move in the way that it wants to. And then on the last one, come back to the center. As you can see, my hands are all over the place. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. So then we're going to start again with a cat cow. Uh, but we're going to move it into a, a little bit more of a flow, but a seated or a floor flow, I suppose. <clears throat> so bringing back that Ujjayi breath, and as I said, try to do the movements with the breath. So, breathe in, cat, so arching the spine. Breathe out, cat. Breathe in, cat. Breathe out, down to child's pose. Now stay here. So breathe in and stretch the hands out. Breathe out, keep stretching. Breathe in, come up to cat again, so arch. Breathe out, this time come up on the knees, stretch up. Then down again to child's pose. Then tuck the toes under and go to down dog. Breathe here. Breathe out, press into the hands. Breathe in, bring the sitting bones up and back. Breathe out, bring the shoulder blades together. Breathe in, so you're lengthening the spine. You wanna feel the stretch in the hamstrings. Ears are approximately in line with the arms. Now again, if you wanna bring a bit of organic movement in here, you can just kind of move the feet. Move the hips, yeah, just to bring a bit of movement into the legs. So on the next in-breath, go down to the knees again and arch. Breathe out, curve the spine. Breathe in and arch. Breathe out, go down to child's pose, keep your arms stretched out. Breathe in, stay down here. Breathe out, stay down again. Breathe in, go to cat. Breathe out, go to cow. I've messed that up, sorry. Breathe in, come up, stretch up. Breathe out, down to child's pose. Breathe in, tuck the toes under. Breathe out, into down dog. Breathe in again. Breathe out, knees come down. Breathe in, cat. Breathe out, cow. Breathe in, cat. Breathe out, child's pose. 
Breathe in, stay down here, stretch the arms out. Breathe out. Breathe in. Cat. Breathe out, cow. Breathe in, stretch up, arms go up. Breathe out, down to child's pose, stretch the arms out. Breathe in, tuck the toes under, push up to down dog, breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out, down to knees. And again, breathe in, cat, arch the spine. Breathe out, curve. Breathe in, cat. Breathe out, down to child's pose, stretch the arms. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in, go to cat. Breathe out, go to cow. Breathe in, now use the stomach muscles to bring you up, stretch up. Breathe out, go down to child's pose. Breathe in, tuck the toes under. Breathe out, down dog. Breathe in. Breathe out, down to knees one more time. So breathe in, cat. Breathe out, cow. Breathe in, cat. Breathe out, cow. Child's pose, stretch the arms out. Breathe in, stay down here, stretch the arms. Breathe out. Breathe in, cat. Breathe out, cow. Breathe in, stretch up, use the stomach muscles to bring you up. Breathe out, down to child's pose. Breathe in, tuck the toes under, push up to down dog, breathe out. Breathe in, push the hands in, breathe out, make the back and the legs long. Breathe in and then walk to the front. Breathe out, straighten the back. Breathe out, fold forward, bend the knees if you want to. And then breathe in, coming up, stretching the arms up. Breathe out, palms together, in front of the heart. So that's the first flow. Let's move on to the second. <clears throat> Stand around the front of your mat. Into Vasana. So basically what we want, strong legs. Strong arms, you might want to tilt the pelvis forward just a little bit, opening up the chest. Legs are strong, straight body, hands to the front. Just close the eyes for a moment, shoulders back, open chest. You're grounded, so we're rooting into the ground and also we're lengthening to the ceiling. So bring yourself up and root yourself into the ground at the same time, lengthening and rooting. So the same as last time with this next one. We're going to do the series twice through, left and right on both sides. The second time we do it through, you can repeat it the same way that we did it the first time, or you could do it in the new way that I'm going to show to you. So you choose. You'll see what I mean by that as we go along. Okay, so just breathe out. Breathe in, stretch the arms up. Breathe out, fold forward. Knees can be bent. Breathe in, go to flat back. Breathe out, fold forward. Breathe in, flat back again. Breathe out, fold forward. Breathe in, flat back one more time. Breathe out, fold forward. Breathe in, then go right foot, left foot into down dog. Breathe out, breathe in and down dog, breathe out, 
Breathe in, push the hips back. Breathe out, come to hands and knees. Breathe in, right foot goes straight back. Breathe out, bring the knee towards the nose. Breathe in, right foot goes back, heel goes up, strong legs. Breathe out, knee to the nose. Breathe in, right foot goes back, heel goes up, strong legs. Breathe out, knee to nose. One more time. Breathe in, right leg goes back. Breathe out, foot comes between the hands this time. So adjust if you need to, to make sure that that front knee is okay. Breathe in, bring the arms up. Breathe out, bend the elbows and go a bit deeper. Keep the legs strong, particularly if you're feeling this in the lower back. Breathe in, stretch up. Breathe out, drop down a bit. Breathe in, stretch up. Breathe out, drop down to your fingers, stretch on that back leg. Breathe in, stretch up. Breathe out, now bring the hands together behind the back. Breathe in, bring the hands up. Breathe out, drop again. Keep the legs strong. Breathe in. Breathe out, drop down again a little bit further. Breathe in. Breathe out, drop down once more, bringing the hands up as well. Breathe in, arms go up, straight up. Breathe out, hands go down in front of the front foot. Tuck the back toe under. Breathe in, go into plank. Breathe out, stay here, strong arms, strong legs. Breathe in, breathe out, knees, chin and chest, and then come up to Sphinx. It can be here, or Cobra. It can be low, it can be higher. Bring the shoulder blades together, so you're opening up the chest. And on the next out breath, make your way back into Child's Pose. And then come back up to Down Dog again. And just stay here for a couple of breaths. Lengthening the back, lengthening the legs. Shoulder blades together. Next out breath, bring the knees down. Breathe in, left leg goes back. Breathe out, knee to chest, knee to chin. <laughs> Breathe in, strong leg goes back. Breathe out, knee towards nose. Breathe in, back one more time. Breathe out, flexing the foot. Breathe in, leg goes back, strong leg. Breathe out, comes between the hands. Adjust this front leg if you need to, be careful of the knee. Breathe in, coming up. Breathe out, bend the elbows, open the chest, shoulder blades together. Breathe in, stretch up. Breathe out, elbows go down. Breathe in, stretch up. Breathe out, elbows go down. Breathe in, stretch up. Breathe out, bring the hands together. Breathe in, this time, hands go up. Breathe out, drop further into that breath leg. Breathe in, hands go up. Breathe out, drop into that back leg. Strong legs though, breathe in. Breathe out one more time. Breathe in, arms go up. Breathe out, hands go beside the foot. Tuck the back toe under. Breathe in, go into plank. Breathe out, just stay here. Breathe in. Breathe out, knees, chest and chin, bend the elbows close to the body and then come up into Cobra. Next out breath, make your way back into Child's Pose and then push up into Down Dog. Breathe in, move the legs if you want to, breathe out, breathe in. And then as you breathe out, walk forward. Breathe in, get a flat back. Breathe out, fold forward. Breathe in, get a flat back, top of the head goes forward. Breathe out, fold forward, bend the knees. Breathe in, get a flat back. Breathe out, fold forward. 
Breathe in, then coming up, stretching the arms up. Breathe out, palms are together. Second time. You can do it the way that we just did it, or you could do it in the next version that I show you. Breathe in, stretch the arms up. Breathe out, fold forward. Breathe in, go flat back. Breathe out, fold forward. Breathe in, go flat back. Breathe out, fold forward. Breathe in, flat back. Breathe out, fold forward. As you breathe in next, then breathe the right foot, then the left foot, and you're going into down dog. Couple of breaths here. So if you want to go down to the knees at this point, then please do. Otherwise, we're going to do it from up here this time. So breathe in, take the right foot back. Breathe out, bring the knee towards the nose. Breathe in, leg goes back. Breathe out, knee towards the nose. Breathe in, leg goes back. Breathe out, knee towards the nose. Breathe in, right leg goes back. Breathe out, this time between the hands. So this time, if you were doing it from down dog, we're up here, this back leg is up. If you did it from hands and knees, back knee is down, that's fine. Either way, just adjust that front foot so there's no pressure on the knee. So we don't want the knee too far forward over the ankle, basically. As you breathe in, stretch up. Strong legs as you breathe out. Bring the elbows down. Breathe in, stretch up. Breathe out, elbows go down and the body goes down. Breathe in, stretch up. Breathe out, coming down. Breathe in, stretch up. Breathe out, hands together at the back. Breathe in, arms go up, hands go up. Breathe out, coming down. Breathe in, bringing the arms, hands up. Breathe out, going down a bit more. Strong legs, breathe in. Breathe out, just dropping down so you can feel the stretch on that back leg. Breathing in, coming up, stretching up. Breathing out, hands go besides the front foot. Breathe in, go back into plank. Breathe out, just stay here for a moment. Now the next bit, you can come down knees, chest and chin or chaturanga. So as you breathe out, come down. As you breathe in, go into cobra or up dog. And then as you breathe out, go back into child's pose and then push up into down dog. Breathe in, then left foot comes up. Breathe out, knee towards nose. Breathe in, left foot goes up. Out, knee towards nose. Breathe in, left foot goes up. Out, knee towards nose. Breathe in, left foot goes up. Breathe out, foot comes between the hands. Adjust that front foot. Back leg is either up in the air here, or maybe you've got the knee on the floor, that's fine. Either way, keep both legs strong. Breathe in, straighten the arms and stretch up. Breathe out, elbows coming down and back, so you're opening the chest. Breathe in, stretch up. Breathe out, open the chest. Breathe in, stretch up. Breathe out, open the chest. Breathe in, stretch up. Breathe out, hands together. Keep the legs strong. Breathe in, hands go up. Breathe out, drop down a bit further, stretching the front thigh. Breathe in. Breathe out, drop down a little bit further. Keep the back legs strong. Breathe in, our hands go up. Breathe out, drop the weight down. Breathe in, stretch up. Breathe out, hands on either side of the front foot. Breathe in, come to plank. Breathe out, stay here. Breathe in. Breathe out, come down to the floor. Breathe in, push to sphinx or up dog, cobra. Breathe out, make your way to child's pose. Breathe in, push it up to down dog. Breathe out. Breathe in, then walk the feet together. And then come to flat back. 
Breathe out, forward, forward. Breathe in, flat back. Breathe out, forward, forward. Breathe in, flat back. Breathe out, forward, forward. Breathe in, bring the arms up. Stretch up. Breathe out, bring the palms together in front of the heart. Close your eyes. I know my breath sounds quite laboured, but uh, talking and practicing at the same time is quite, um, that's the reason. <laughs> and also because we've got the blood pumping, we've got the circulation going, the muscles moving here. Combination. Okay, so then let's just do a slow one to get back down again and just move into a little bit more yin before we finish. So breathe in, stretch out, but don't stretch quite so much. Breathe out, fold forward, come down. Breathe in again, go to flat back, but a gentle one. Breathe out, fold forward. Breathe in a gentle flat back. Breathe out, fold forward, bend the knees so the belly comes towards the legs. Breathe in, flat back. Breathe out, bend the knees, fold forward. Breathe in, right foot goes back, left foot goes back. Down dog, gentle down dog. Bend the knees, actually. Push the hips back, sitting bones back. And then bring the knees down. And then what we're gonna do for the last part of the session we're going to move into caterpillar. So just drop down onto your hip, make your way into caterpillar. So sitting on the floor, legs out straight. We're going to stretch the hamstrings. So then just fold forward. So with this being yin, as I said before, come to your natural stopping point and then just relax. You might want to just hold on to the legs or the ankles or maybe the toes. And it may be that you feel a little bit of help. So what I mean by that is, for example, with me holding on to the toes here, I can feel that's giving me a little bit more stretch. So I'm helping the stretch along a little bit but in a yin way and just a little bit. I'm okay with that. If I can help you stimulate the body slightly more, if I can just help you slightly more. So it's up to you. But what we wanna feel is a stretch in the backs of the thighs. Now, if it's too much, or maybe there's a pull on the back of the knees, then by all means, just bend the knees, perhaps placing a rolled blanket or something underneath to support them. That's another option. Alternatively, if you feel like you're not really getting much stretch, something that can also help sometimes, or if you feel like you're falling backwards, Sitting up on something can also help by tilting the hips forward. So we're going to just stay in this for a couple of minutes. So just close your eyes. And just allow the breath to go back to normal, the heart to go back to normal. Drop the head if that's okay for the neck. And you may feel a bit of a stretch here in the back as well as the hamstrings. Just notice the breath calming down and going back to normal. 
and the heart rate going back to normal. Allow the body to relax into the pose. And don't think just because I'm holding onto my toes here that you should be trying to do that. This is how my body is working right now and actually because I've warmed up the muscles in my legs I can touch, I can hold on to the feet but if the muscles were cold, which generally they should be when you do yin yoga actually, quite often I can't reach the toes. So it also depends on where you are at a particular moment in time as well as your skeleton, as well as tension in the body. So don't feel that you should be holding onto the toes just because I am. Okay, so we're gonna let go now. And we're just gonna move directly into Shavasana. So just make your way onto your back. Now you can either have the legs straight again, or if your lower back is feeling a bit tender, which it may do after that last pose in particular, then you may want to do the same thing that we just did a minute ago, which was to bend the knees, place a rolled blanket or a bolster if you have one perhaps underneath the knees. And then just spend a few moments getting comfortable moving the hips, moving the shoulders. You just get into as comfortable a position as you, as you want and then close your eyes. And just allow yourself to relax, to soften. Relaxed but alert. Just being. Just experiencing. Just feeling. So I will, as always, leave you here now in Shavasana. Give it a little bit longer. Give your time, give your body time to rest, to relax. And I hope to see you at the yin yoga session on Friday or back here next week for some more yin yang yoga. Thanks so much for joining me. See you again.